Hey folks, Lemonade here, and today we're looking at two different USB DAC amp combos. How they compare, and do you really even need one? Let's get into it after this. folks you know the drill if you like the video at some point don't forget to like and sub down below it really does help the channel out a lot thanks all right let's knock out some specs and pricing and then we'll get into the details so the creative x1 over here has a akm ak4377 dac it can go up to 24 bit 96 kilohertz and it retails for 69.99 the ibaso dc 03 pro has dual cs 43131 DAX in it, regarded as some of the better ones in the industry. It can go up to 32 bit at 384 kilohertz and it retails for $54.99. Now, in regards to design, both are fairly small aluminum devices that support USB C and a 3.5 millimeter output. They both look and feel incredible, well built, and there's really no difference in overall build quality. It's just going to be an aesthetic choice. The Ibaso here does come in three color options in all black, silver that I have here, and then blue, so the aluminum would be blue. Uh, again, the Creative just has this one colorway here, all aluminum as well. Now the Creative has a volume up and down mute button and this Super X5 button up here that I will cover a bit later. The DC3 Pro, on the other hand, just has a volume up and down over here at the bottom, but this volume up and down actually functions a bit differently than you would expect. So on the Creative, it controls the Windows system volume as a whole, which you may think is fine, but unfortunately that isn't a great way to dial in certain IEMs. So when I was testing these two, I was using my TRN TA1 Maxis here. I have a separate video if you want to check the review of that here. And I had to set this to a lower volume level so that they didn't get too loud with the Creative X1. But in turn, they made everything else like game and music, YouTube too quiet. And then the vice versa was happening with them with the other directions. I eventually found a middle ground, but it was a bit frustrating to get these dialed in with the Creative X1. On the DC3 Pro, you can actually set its volume to 100 in Windows, just like the Creative X1. But then on top of that, the volume control on the device adjusts its internal output. And you have 100 steps of volume here. That alone has been a huge bonus over how Creative or even your motherboard audio is handled. This gives you another layer of finer audio control. Packaging for Creative was a standard kind of cardboard with a thin piece of foam in it. On the DC3 Pro, it came in a hard plastic shell, as you can see, with two pieces of thick foam and nice aluminum USB-C to USB-A adapter, which you can see in the box there. Which is missing in the Creative, this was a good touch from Ibaso to include as USB-C ports can be limited on certain PCs. In terms of software, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Creative, on one hand, has a full desktop application, which is nice, and you can see that here, but a lot of the options it has are not to my liking. The acoustic engine is essentially an easy EQ mode with some AI enhancements. There's also a regular EQ to fine tune. The scout mode enhances footsteps apparently, but it boosts everything else to kind of ear shattering levels and distortion. The mixer is just a nicer looking Windows sound settings menu. And lastly, there is Super XFi mode. What is that? This mode is the proprietary surround sound mode, which I was hoping would be a step up from other virtual surround sounds because most of them are pretty poor. And it was heavily marketed all over the packaging and the website for this product. But I was disappointed. Again, it just introduces subpar sound representation for a clearly overblown virtual surround situation. Maybe in movies with the right headphones, it could be fun, but for gaming on IM specifically, definitely it made things less clear. I forgot to mention the creative app does also include a profile sound mode, which is nice if you have several different headphones that you switch between. All in all, the app looks nice. It seems to have a lot of features, but frankly, the way it EQs the sound just seems off. So I ran the majority of my testing with this DAC in its stock settings with none of the extras turned on. On the flip side over here, the iBaso does not have a desktop app, which is a bit lame, but 
For its saving grace, they did include an Android application. As you can see here, I'll pull it up on the screen. We have full control of all 100 volume steps through this app, left and right balance, a digital filter, which for my non-audiophile ears was practically impossible for me to discern the difference between any of the five options. This could be good for audiophiles with maybe full-size headphones. Uh, there's also a three-stage gain option of low, medium, and high. Very nice touch. And lastly, a turbo or normal output option, which again, I could not hear any difference. It was not by default, so I left it on turbo. Unfortunately, there's no documentation explaining some of these options here for iBaso, which on the flip side with Creative, you will find a bit more detailed breakdown of each of their settings. Okay, so let's get to the sound and which is better. And for me, it was the DC3 Pro. It provided a cleaner separation of instruments and music and helped enhance the sound, staging and imaging over the Creative. Now, by staging it, I mean the wideness of the sound, and by imaging, I mean the accuracy or pinpointness of how it layers that sound within the stage. This, of course, translated well in gaming as well. Now, the creative was not bad overall, and frankly, it was tough one to discern the differences going back and forth. That said, they were both a great step up from my motherboard audio. This leads me to the final point. Do you even need a DAC amp? Is it worth it in general? And the answer to that question is yes, motherboards are notorious for using low quality DAC solutions. These really bring a bit more life into your IEMs and headphones. Plus with a lower noise floor, they should avoid the kind of low level hissing that you can experience on some headphones and some motherboards. Now that noise isn't necessarily noticeable in game or while playing music, but you can hear it if you have no sound on and your headphones or your IEMs are in. And frankly, I just don't want any possibility of my audio coming off as not clean or crisp, even if it's minimal. So I prefer that these reduce it to essentially zero. Now this does translate to even bigger gains on even higher quality headphones or IEMs that can pull more of an advantage out of these when it comes to the amp side and increasing volume and gain for those more power hungry IEMs and headphones. Now, will this be a massive difference for you? Not by itself but if you really want to improve your audio game, this is a piece of the puzzle if you're going to be investing in nice IEMs or headphones. Overall though, between both, my pick is definitely gonna be for the DC3 Pro. It's less expensive and on the spectrum of DAC amps, a steal for the price tag, has great build quality, a great feature set, a simple app and stellar performance. And on that note, all my socials are down below along with any affiliate links and discount codes if you had a good time with me today, likes and subs are super appreciated. Leave a comment down below as well. Let me know your thoughts. But until the next Fresh Squeeze video, stay thirsty, folks.